In this video, we'll do an example in which we find the domain of a function that has a denominator restriction. So the example says to find the domain of f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 2x and to write our answer in interval notation. So recall that domain is talking about all of the possible inputs of our function, everything that we are allowed to plug in. And in a problem, when the domain, when we're given a function and the domain isn't specified, we assume that it wants the largest possible domain. So the largest possible domain. So the way I typically think about domain and everything that I can plug in is to think first about the restrictions on the inputs. Are there any restrictions on the numbers that I'm able to plug into this function? And with this function, there's one type of restriction. It's the fact that there's a denominator. So the denominator is x squared minus 2x. The denominator is not allowed to be equal to zero. So to deal with that restriction, I'm going to find when the denominator is zero. So let's find when x squared minus 2x equals zero. And if I factor this, we get x times x minus 2 equals zero. So now I know that x is equal to zero or two. So those are the values that make the denominator be zero. And because of that, thus, x is not going to be allowed to be equal to either 0 or 2. Because if, if that could happen, plugging them in would make my fraction undefined, because the bottom would be 0. All right, so in terms of this restriction, it just tells us x can't be 0 and x can't be 2. So if I draw this on a number line, So I'm going to make a number line, and I'm going to put 0 on it and 2 on it. And because x can't be 0, I'll put an open circle there. And similarly, at 2, I'll put an open circle. But that's the only restriction, which means x can be anything else. So I'm going to shade in everything to the left of 0, everything between 0 and 2, and everything to the right of 2. I'm going to shade all of that in, because x can be any of those numbers. And now we're ready to write down our answer in interval notation. So we're ready for some interval notation. So in interval notation, the first interval goes from negative infinity to zero. At negative infinity, we always write a parenthesis because it's not an actual number. So we can't actually reach negative infinity. Because zero is not included, I put a parenthesis there. When I have multiple intervals like this that I need to describe, I'm going to join them with the union symbol. So this symbol is a symbol for a union, which means, in words, it's like the word or. Either I'm going to be in that first interval, or I can be in this next interval, which is 0 to 2. Parentheses at both of those, because I can't be at 0 and I can't be at 2. One more union, and the third interval is from 2 to infinity. And that is our domain. So in the next video, we're going to do another domain question that has a square root restriction. Same function, just going to put a square root over the whole thing.